This video is supported by Curiosity Stream. With regard to piracy of Windows operating system running rampant in China, here's what most people think. China opened up in the early 1980s and when computers and the internet came to the Chinese people in the 1990s, China was still poor and backward. Therefore, piracy became the natural way for them to afford an expensive operating system. This, however, does not give them the right to do so. The former CEO of Microsoft, Steve Ballmer, is famously vocal about his unhappiness towards piracy in China. But the truth is, all of this is only a small part of the reality. Microsoft knowingly allowed piracies in developing countries, including China, and in retrospect, this could be one of the most successful business strategy Microsoft has ever adopted. Piracy is undoubtedly bad, but here is the reason why piracy might have helped Microsoft dominate not only in China, but every part of the world. Well, when we discussed the Chinese piracy problem in 2019, it feels like a big problem that might have lost Microsoft tens of billions of dollars. We need to understand the relative strength of China 30 years ago. The truth is, in the early 1990s, when pirated versions of Windows were running rampant in China, the entire Chinese GDP was only $360.9 billion and that of the United States was $6 trillion. China was not only a tiny market for Microsoft, it was not expected to rise as it did in the last 30 years. Microsoft at the time has the technology to stop Windows piracy in China and stand tall on matters like intellectual property right, but this would have accomplished nothing for Microsoft financially and even if some people bought Windows because of it, it would have only made Microsoft a few million dollars, which was a drop in a bucket for Microsoft then. Piracy of Windows in China was also happening in the backdrop of a decade-long anti-Microsoft campaign. Many of my old audiences might remember this. Microsoft had a very bad reputation in the 1990s, facing tremendous challenges from not only the open source community led by Linux, but it was also constantly challenged by the United States government over its monopoly status, which was culminated in the United States versus Microsoft Corporation case. The United States government interest of Microsoft began in 1992 with an inquiry by the FTC over whether Microsoft was abusing its monopoly status on PC operating systems market and ended in 2001 with a settlement for more compliance. There was also a wider consensus within the tech community against Microsoft abusing its monopoly status to compete unfairly with other software companies. No one liked Microsoft then. Particularly in China, Windows was charged at a forbidden rate in the 1990s, at times 50% more expensive than its cost in the United States. Windows 98, for example, cost $89 in the United States and was priced at 1,198 yuan in China, 50% above the US rate. Complete versions of Windows, which was priced at $189 in the United States, cost 1,999 yuan in China, $50 more expensive than the United States price. To put these numbers in perspective, an average Chinese in the 90s makes around 1,999 yuan in half a year, and the pirated version of Windows 97 cost $3. The choice was obvious. Another crisis came from Linux. This was a more relevant factor for China. Without the pirated versions of Windows, Linux was going to be a natural choice for China because it is open source and free. Android, for example, uses Linux kernels under the hood. Therefore, frankly, if Windows decided to strictly enforce its IP laws in China and India, it probably could have succeeded in preventing piracy in those countries, but it is almost certain that people in China would have adopted Linux in the 1990s and Microsoft would have lost one of its biggest markets right at the beginning and predictably, there won't be the Microsoft we see today that's worth over a trillion dollars. Bill Gates famously stated in the 90s that we'd rather the Chinese steal our technology than forcing them to use the free Linux instead. The water is also not calm from the Chinese side. There was also wide-reaching anti-American sentiment due to the bombing of Chinese embassy in Belgrade by the United States in 1999. Three Chinese nationals were killed at the time and the Chinese government called that a barbarian act. And there was also an incident of an American intelligence aircraft crashing with a Chinese fighter jet, which caused the death of one Chinese pilot. These events fueled even more anti-American sentiments among the Chinese. It is against this background that we should make sense of the Chinese piracy problem. While it is wrong for the Chinese to pirate their windows for free, 
it was never meant to be a free launch for them. Microsoft could have prevented it from happening, but as it turns out, allowing the Chinese to pirate actually works in the best interest of Microsoft. Rather than letting Linux take over the developing market, Microsoft closed one eye on piracy, and what awaits Microsoft is now a huge opportunity. By 2015, all Chinese computers are running licensed versions of Microsoft, or at least, if they wanted to, they could. Regardless of the versions of Microsoft someone is running, Microsoft has given all of them free upgrade to Windows 10. It has effectively transitioned Microsoft to a freemium business model, selling bundled services rather than just the operating system. Office 365, OneDrive, and Microsoft Azure cloud services are now making big waves in the tech community. But still, I want to focus on one problem we touched upon earlier. Is free Windows really free? In addition to charging for premium security services, Office 365 is right now one of the softwares that we can't live without. Every Chinese student, if you talk to them, uses Word document and PowerPoint presentations on a daily basis. Anyone who does data manipulation would tell you that he can't live without Excel spreadsheet. Microsoft services are in every part of the Chinese daily lives. However, the consumer business is only a tiny drop in a bucket for Microsoft. Its enterprise solutions are the real game. Customized Azure cloud services are now slowly becoming the backbone of many Chinese internet companies, and half of its virtual machines are running on Windows servers. Now that Microsoft started cracking down on piracy in China, you can hardly find any computer running pirated versions of Windows anymore. Therefore, there was never free launch, and the Chinese are now paying for it by supporting even broader Microsoft services starting with Windows, but then it goes on to Office, OneDrive, Azure, so on and so forth. Microsoft made a very controversial decision to close one eye on Windows piracies in China. But many years later, while eBay and Amazon were outcompeted by Taobao and Alibaba, Google and Facebook basically evicted by the Chinese government, Microsoft has made itself indispensable for the Chinese people and their daily lives. We can't help but have tremendous respect for Microsoft and its leadership to have such foresight, such business acumen, and most importantly, such flexibility to have adapted to the Chinese market and to the habits of the Chinese people. If you want to know how technology evolved with Microsoft in the past 30 years, do check out our sponsor of today, CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,400 documentaries from some of the world's best filmmakers. One of my favorite technology series on CuriosityStream is this one called Dream the Future. It consists videos on the future of cities, future of transportation, future of work, and so on. Technology companies like Microsoft has forged our past but more is to come as we head to the future of humanity. Other than this series, CuriosityStream has an entire section focused on technology. One of its subsections is transportation, which is something I know we all care about. Do check it out. CuriosityStream offered audiences a 31-day free trial, so sign up with the link in the description down below with the code CuriousElephant and try it out for free. Once your free trial is up, they charge $19.99 a year, which is only $1.67 a month. So start binge watching and exploring the future of technology today with CuriosityStream. Stream.